Hello everyone, I'm Andrea Witte and welcome to Connect the Dots USA. U.S. healthcare prices are just too darn high. Fragmentation with so many different private payers means each lacks the negotiating power and clout to get the lowest prices. So a one-day hospital stay in the United States will run you about $5,200, while in New Zealand it's $2,100 and Australia it's only $765. Need a coronary bypass? That averages 78,000 in the US, but only 24,000 in the United Kingdom. An MRI will run you about $1,100 in the United States, but only $215 in Australia. A 30-day supply of Advair costs about $155 in the US, but only $74 in Canada and $38 in Germany. Now, how much Americans actually pay out of pocket on these inflated U.S. prices depends on whether you have insurance and the details of your particular insurance plan. In other countries, these prices and the costs are paid mainly by the system with very little out of pocket for the patient. And let's not forget Mylan's EpiPen that commands $600 in the United States, but only $100 in Canada. And remember sociopathic pharma bro Martin Shkreli, who jacked the price of an old antiparasitic drug called Daraprim from $13 a pill to $750 a pill overnight. In Canada, they pay about a dollar per pill. Now, the good thing is Martin Shkreli did go to prison, but not for that. That was totally legal. Uh, he went to prison for screwing some rich people out of some money on an earlier deal. Then there's the hepatitis C drug Sovaldi, which costs about $1,000 per pill in the United States. So that totals $84,000 for the 12 week course of treatment. Uh, meanwhile, there's a high quality generic alternative in India that goes for about $4 per pill. Speaking of hep C, analysts for investment bank Goldman Sachs recently admitted that curing infectious diseases is bad for business. It may be good for society, but it's bad for business. Not only do you lose the recurring revenue stream, the cash flow from that patient, but that person won't be infecting any other people, thereby creating new customers. As comedian Lee Camp describes this barbaric mindset, Goldman Sachs is in a financial partnership with freaking infectious diseases. Talk about perverse incentives and market failure. My favorite comedian, Chris Rock, had this figured out two decades ago when he joked, they ain't ever gonna cure anything because the money's in the medicine, not in the cure. The money's in the comeback. The drug dealer gets his money on the comeback. If you lack insurance or accidentally go out of network, you'll get smacked with those insane charge master prices. And beware of RAPLES, R-A-P-L-E-S, which is an acronym for out of network radiologists, anesthesiologists, pathologists, labs, ER docs, and specialists who spring up at in-network facilities. And then you suddenly get a surprise bill from an out of network provider. Look at this example of my husband's ER visit um, for a treatment of a painful kidney stone last year. If you lacked insurance or accidentally were out of network, you would have little leverage against the $14,000 charge master price. Meanwhile, traditional Medicare negotiated that price down to less than $1,200. In this case, Medicare paid $936. My husband's Medicare supplement paid $188 and he paid zero. The hospital didn't even bother to bill him the final $50 copay for an ER visit. So because 96% of all doctors and nearly every hospital in this entire country chooses to accept traditional Medicare's reimbursement rates, that's a good indication that they are more than adequate. In his famous article, The Bitter Pill, Why Medical Bills Are Killing Us, investigative reporter Stephen Brill exposes the widespread price gouging that goes on regularly in the United States. It's a complete seller's market with no pricing transparency and no leverage for buyers that are often facing life and death decisions in crisis. Individuals with their high deductible plans and health savings accounts are no match for the evil charge master, which is a completely irrational set of prices that every hospital maintains, but they deny having as if it were an eccentric uncle living in the attic, as uh, Stephen Burrell describes it.
This is the land of the $2 Tylenol pill and the $77 box of gauze, where the same stress test is billed at $8,000 to the desperate and uninsured, but only $550 if to patients protected by Medicare. Fragmented private insurers are doing well if they have enough clout to be negotiating up from Medicare prices as opposed to down from ChargeMaster prices. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button and click the little bell so you'll be notified when I drop new videos. And be sure to check out my website, connect.usa.com, where you can download for free JPEGs and PDFs of the graphics I use in these videos. They're all conveniently organized by topic and include all source information at the bottom. And please join me on Facebook and Twitter, where I post these graphics individually with commentary. Thank you, everyone.